On behalf of the Long Island uh, Board of Realtors, nearly 29,000 members uh, spanning NASA, Suffolk, and Queens, thank you for joining us for our second annual Local Advocacy Day. You were here with us last year, and we're appreciative of then and now. Um, we're joined here today by some of our members in webinar form. They're, uh, they're in the background, so they're all saying good morning to you. Good morning. Um, we're also joined here, uh, and just so you know, we're recording this today because a lot of our members obviously do a lot of business or have their business meetings in the morning. So we're gonna record it so that they have it available to view at a later time. Uh, we're also joined by our uh, LIBOR Government Affairs uh, NASA and Suffolk Committee Chair, Joe Garcia, and our Vice Chair, Judy Kanjemi. And of course, you know our VP of Government Affairs, Bo Patton. We, uh, we're just happy to have you here today and, and thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Maul. It's great to be uh, with you. Uh, this is the second annual, uh, and this is the second annual in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, yeah. still, so um, pretty unique. Uh, the differences were in a far better place than we were a year ago uh, than um, you know, coming out of the first wave of the pandemic. Uh, we are, out of that second wave, of course, now, which started in uh, the fall, it was the end of October, that Halloween weekend, uh, where the second wave really began for us in Suffolk County here. Uh, and we went, <clears throat> after going through the summer, being around in the ones and the positivity rate, we, over the course of the holidays, jumped up to 13%. We went from uh, about 40 people in the hospitals up to uh, almost 1,000 again. Uh, in the hospitals during that second wave. Uh, but uh, after the new year, two things happened. I think people started to uh, hunker down after all the holidays passed and, and we got into January and February. We also started vaccinating people uh, then. So uh, we have seen the numbers decline significantly to the point where now yesterday we were below 1%. I think we were at 0.8% yesterday. We have about 135 people in the hospitals right now. So uh, we're not quite down to where we were last summer, over the summer or before the second wave began, but we know hospitalizations are a lagging indicator. So <clears throat> by all accounts, we are now uh, emerging from this pandemic. Uh, we are in a far different place because now 65% of the people in the county are vaccinated. Overall on Long Island, that number is a little bit higher. NASA is uh, adjacent New York City, vaccinating a lot of uh, people there as well. Laura Kern's doing a great job. So uh, we're in a great place there. Now, having said that, I think it is very important and we are focused on this, that we get as many people vaccinated as possible. I really wanna see us hit that uh, 75 to 85% number that experts have talked about uh, health experts have talked about as the number you need really to get to herd immunity. People have questioned whether we can achieve herd immunity at this point. For me, uh, you know, that's a larger question. I'm not going to get into that. Our focus is we want to get we want to get to that point here in Suffolk County and I think on Long Island, because in our region we want to be able to say to the to the maximum extent possible that this virus is behind us. That after this traumatic experience that we've gone through, unprecedented. Uh, unlike anything we've ever seen before, uh, that this virus is gone. And we can move forward with great confidence that um, the worst of this is behind us and it's not going to be coming back. And I do feel confident. I am optimistic uh, about the future. I think we, coming out of COVID, we focused from the very beginning, not just on the health crisis, but we knew this was also a social services crisis. It was a phys fiscal crisis. And it was a business crisis. That's why we stood up a business recovery unit uh, right away uh, in, the, in that first uh, week uh, and have focused on working closely with our small businesses uh, in our downtowns uh, and, and working with them both to advocate uh, on a state federal level, level for the things that, that they needed, uh, but also to put forward programs that could uh, assist them in, in their recovery. So. I really feel like we are poised uh, coming out of the pandemic uh, to uh, have a strong uh, resurgence economically. I think the investments that have been made into the economy, the, the stimulus that has been put in the economy is critical uh, and it has had a really positive impact. 
And I think that's going to be part of the reason I want to thank Senator Schumer uh, for his leadership on that, our congressional delegation as well. Uh, we've worked in a bipartisan way with our entire congressional delegation throughout the pandemic. So uh, again, I'm feeling very confident coming out uh, of, of the pandemic and looking forward to uh, a bright economic future uh, and uh, a bright future in general, more broadly for all of us. Thank you. Uh, we'll just open it up to our, our members. Joe, Judy, go ahead and take it away. Well, I guess so you had mentioned, you know, really the, the crisis that our business people and our residents had, uh, had have gone through. Going forward, what do you think the biggest challenges are for our small businesses um, who really are the lifeblood of a lot of our communities? They, they are the Little League sponsors. They are the reason some of our downtowns become so popular. Um, certainly things are looking up for them, but what do you think uh, from the county's perspective the biggest challenges are gonna be for them over the next year? Well, the, the biggest challenge, of course, moving forward was survival, survival through uh, you know, the pandemic, the shutdowns and, and everything else. And, and a lot of that work was triage and uh, our small business owners really showed uh, how incredible they are. Uh, unfortunately, we did see a number of businesses uh, that, um, that went out, but um, you know, so many survived through this crisis. So. Uh, survival was first. Now it's about how do we get back to thriving? Our small businesses, downtowns were uh, facing significant challenges before the, the pandemic. Uh, the challenges that retail businesses are facing from, from the internet. Uh, you know, we've seen a change in that uh, to make it more competitive in terms of tax policy, whereas there were uh, purchases over the internet that weren't being taxed, but they were being taxed in our uh, small retail downtown businesses. That playing field has been uh, leveled now. And I think going forward for us, what we need to do uh, is to uh, support small businesses by making investments in those downtowns and doing the things that will support um, their success. And they, they have to be competitive in different ways. Uh, people want a downtown experience. People, people want friendly service in their local um, stores. Uh, so we need to governmentally support them in a couple of different ways. Number one, make investments in the downtowns where you create uh, or enhance the experience. Uh, so that can be through communication, it can be through design and infrastructure work that is done to support local plans and, and by the way, support local planning where you can do uh, enhanced experience, experiences in those downtowns. We also need to help them in terms of the regulatory process and the approval process. We did with record speed um, the approvals for restaurants that all of a sudden couldn't have capacity inside. Uh, but we're permitted to have capacity outside. So instead of uh, going through this long, drawn out permit process to, to do this, we immediately said, town, if, if, if you give authorization to allow them to expand uh, outside uh, and you approve that, we will automatically approve the wastewater uh, permitting on that. And towns did it quickly. Uh, Supervisor Wareheim, uh, really in Smithtown, uh, Supervisor Carpenter in, in Islip, uh, Schneiderman, all, the supervisors we worked very closely with, they moved. And so we were able to do that with record speed. Government needs to take that lesson moving forward. We need to be there working with small businesses to assist them. Yes, proper regulation, but not un unnecessary waste and inefficiency and delay that causes uh, and costs businesses. And then we need to make other investments that support local businesses, smart investments in housing, uh, where you are uh, appropriately placing the kind of housing we need uh, in and around downtowns that provide a natural customer base, and that also uh, deliver the housing we need for that continuum of housing we need to continue to attract young uh, innovators, entrepreneurs, and keep our young people here so that we can uh, grow our economy. And we have this cycle of people who are coming back from college, um, earning a living, and then able to buy a home. We need to keep that going. So those investments are going to be very important. Thank you. Judy? 
Oh, thank you. Um, first, um, I just want to acknowledge that May is Military Appreciation Month, and Mr. Malone, I did want to thank you for your service. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you to everyone who has served, and particularly, you know, I was fortunate enough to serve during uh, peacetime. Um, I have a great admiration and respect for all those who've served in time of war, and uh, obviously this month is uh, we commemorate Memorial Day, and uh, we thank the sacrifice. So, so thank you for saying that. So it's my pleasure, and thank you for your service once again. Um, Newsday this week had a story about NASA's intention to uh, issue $375 payments to property owners coming from the federal stimulus money that New York received. Is Suffolk County considering anything similar? We are uh, doing a number of different things, uh, but we're focused right now on making sure that we have the resources we need to address the challenges coming out of COVID. You know, a lot of um, the issues that that people have been dealing with and people have confronted um, were exacerbated during COVID in ways that we haven't fully begun to grapple with yet. So, uh, for instance, we had a 100% increase uh, in calls to uh, suicide hotline. We had uh, addiction, uh, the, the opioid epidemic, where we had reversed the trend and we saw over the last couple of years, actually opioid deaths starting to come down again. Well, now that has reversed itself and, and shot back uh, up. We've seen significant increases in domestic violence, um, also concerns about um, uh, child uh, protective services and, and, and abuse, housing issues that uh, are being exacerbated now. So COVID is going to be a recover, as I've said many times, COVID is not going to be something that just ends and we're done. The economy seems to be doing well now because we have put a significant amount of stimulus into the economy. But what are they gonna be the impacts uh, next year and the year after? So we're focused on providing assistance to our small businesses, uh, looking at what are the impacts uh, and trying to understand those moving forward. Uh, and then uh, making sure that uh, the county is in a financial position to make the investments necessary uh, for us to have a successful recovery and uh, broad prosperity moving forward. Thank you. Sure. Um, County Executive, thank you uh, again so much for your for your time this morning. Um, uh, a topic always in Suffolk County is is our water quality. Mm -hmm. uh, just in the last few months, our our association joined uh, several other uh, community organizations, interested partners on a uh, wastewater feasibility task force. So um, we were glad to participate in that. You know, uh, enlighten us some on on where you see that going next. Uh, I, I'm assuming the feasibility study is going to be presented to the county legislature, to your office, and um, what what are they ne the next steps in our our water quality conversations in Suffolk County? Yeah, when you talk about that, thank you, but when you talk about uh, prosperity and and recovery and and how do we uh, maintain moving forward and grow moving forward uh, in a sustainable way. Water quality is at the top of the list. I had made water quality our, our number one issue. Uh, I talked about uh, early on in the administration, nitrogen, nitrogen being public water had to be number one, and that we have to reverse the decades of decline that we have seen in water quality here because water to a, to a larger extent than most places in the country here on Long Island underpins our economic prosperity. Uh, water effectively is everything to us here. It's our uh, quality of life. Uh, you know, so many of the reasons why people live here is, you know, we have this incredible, these incredible natural resources, lakes, rivers, and streams. People love boating and fishing, um, and just enjoying the, the great open space that we have. Um, our water underpins a six point three billion dollar tourism industry here uh, in the region. Uh, whether you're talking about uh, for agriculture or just the amazing things we have. And of course, the water we drink, um, our recreation also, of course, but the water we drink is beneath our feet. Uh, so in, in so many ways, if we don't protect water quality and really, again, reverse the decline that we have seen because of pollution over the last uh, four or five decades, uh, we're not going to have 
and we can have a prosperous economic future. So um, talking about uh, some of those investments we made, Judy, we, we invested actually 30 uh, million of the uh, stimulus dollars and actually 100 million overall in an announcement we did on Earth Day to advance two major wastewater treatment projects, two sewer projects around the Calls River in Babylon and the Forge River in Workhaven on the Mastic Peninsula. Uh, that is going to advance significantly our water quality efforts. And in addition to that, uh, part of the $100 million is $30 million that is going to advance uh, uh, septic systems, these individual systems in people's homes where sewering is not possible. Uh, we've committed to making these systems that treat for the pollution affordable and workable for homeowners. Because here's what I've, I've promised to residents. I, as much as we need to improve water quality, we can't do it by overburdening residents with, with new taxes and, and new burdens. What we need to do in a smart way, we need to make it uh, affordable and workable for homeowners. And that's why we created the first septic improvement pro grant program in the state of New York, uh, in which we issue uh, significant grants that bring the cost down to essentially what it would be for a uh, older uh, traditional septic system that doesn't treat for pollution. Uh, so uh, investments in water quality, absolutely critical. We've been very aggressive that issue and I appreciate uh, LIBOR's uh, participation uh, and involvement and understanding of how important that is for all of us on Long Island. Well, we, um, we look forward to continuing to be part of those, uh, those conversations uh, on, that, on that important issue. Um, something else of, of equal importance that uh, uh, we want to just sort of share with you and update on, on where we are, uh, and that's, that's talking about fair housing. Um, you know, a lot, has, a lot has transpired since the Newsday story broke, but uh, mm -hmm. kind of wanted to share some most recent updates with you, uh, some conversations that we've had and continue to have. Uh, we continue to serve on the Suffolk County Fair Housing Task Force, which we are very excited to, to continue working with Legislator Gonzalez and Flotteran, uh, who, who are the uh, members of the legislature on that task force. Uh, we recently worked with Legislator Richburg and Gonzalez on uh, the Covenants Bill that just passed. So um, thanks to the county legislature for passing that, your office for signing it. Um, recently, we, we were able to work with your office on uh, April was Fair Housing Month. And uh, we worked with your office to uh, have, a, have a proclamation acknowledging that from the county uh, and even recognizing your office did LIBOR in the proclamation. So uh, we thank you for that. We uh, continue to reach out to our, our county partners across Long Island, CDC, LI, LIHS on, on programming and education that we can bring our members, we can bring them um, working at the state level with uh, several bills that are coming out of the, the Senate and the Assembly on fair housing. Uh, and outside of the county, you know, we are, we're, we're working hard with, with New York City and the state to try to uh, pass some meaningful, impactful co-op legislation. You know, Suffolk County has had uh, meaningful co-op legislation in place for, for many years now, but um, the, the dialogues that we are having and our, our members are continuing to have are, are good ones. We want to continue to, to be leaders and do everything that we, we can to make sure that um, we, we move away from that past of Long Island and uh, any way that we can continue to work with you and your office, you know, we, we would love to, to continue to be able to do that. I really appreciate that. And thank you for the update on that uh, and the continued collaboration. You know, once when that report came out, obviously we had met uh, right away. And, and I want to say that uh, you were uh, incredibly responsive right from the outset of this and, and have continued to do that in a very proactive way. Uh, and I think that's a very positive thing. Look, we're, we're a diverse county, uh, we're a diverse country, and we, we're continuing to grow more and more diverse. And, you know, we celebrate that diversity here. It's a strength uh, of ours, and uh, we all have a commitment. I think it's very important uh, that we have that commitment to making sure that everybody is treated equally and fairly and justly. That's a um, under uh, pinning uh, value of our nation. Uh, and uh, I appreciate all of your efforts uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, you have the, the structures in place and things in place necessary to ensure that is the case. 
Fantastic. Thank you very, thank you very much. Um, before we before we wrap up, do you care if we snap a quick uh, snap a quick photo? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll do a we'll do a quick screenshot if everybody wants to uh, do a quick smile on one, two, three. Um, last rapid fire question, um, Judy. Sure. I think I'm going to steal the question from you, but I uh, wrap, just right before we wrap up, being term limited. What's what's your legacy? What's the last you know, what's, what do you want to, what do you want to leave behind? Well, uh, it, look, we've, um, we, ca I came into this government and um, I've always had the perspective that county government is critical in a region where you have such a decentralized government structure. The county government is critical because it's the one place where you can pull together the disparate elements of this system around collective action. So we have, we have tried to do that. That means, number one, the county government needs to function. It needs to be efficient. It needs to be effective. All governments need to do that, but it's particularly important here. So I've focused on, number one, battling corruption here, uh, which we've done in the district attorney's office. Uh, winning that battle has been key to being able to implement governmental reforms here, to restructure this government, to make sure that it's working for people. And then collective action around issues like water quality, economic development, our Connect Long Island plan to create economic prosperity by connecting our downtowns effectively with our innovation assets and our uh, public transportation. Uh, those types of things, investing uh, in the environment and, and making sure that we do the government reform necessary to make sure the government works for people. Uh, those are the things that uh, we focus on. And we need to, by the way, think big moving forward. No, we're not going to get into this now, but uh, um, you know, we need to get back into doing big, bold things in this country again. I've been a big advocate for high-speed rail. Uh, China has been building a 21st century transportation infrastructure in their country for two decades now, connecting mega regions in their country. We need to do that here. We need to catch up and, and uh, get ahead once again. Um, and that means willingness to do the kind of big, bold things we've done in the past during the Civil War, the uh, Transcontinental Railroad, during the Cold War, building the interstate highway system, landing a man on the moon. We can do, throughout our history, we've shown big, bold things. We have to get back into doing that. Fantastic. Well, um, thank you so much for your for your time today. Uh, as always, we, we love the dialogue with you and your team, and uh, we look forward to uh, working with you as you finish out your term and also wish you the, the best of luck in whatever your next steps are after that. So uh, lots of work left to be done, but thank you very much this morning. Thank you both. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate thank it. You.